Hey guys, so today I'm going to show you how to get Ducky for fast. It's a new strategy. Uh, it's the fastest strategy at the moment. And it's due to a new patch which made Manglers, uh, Mimics, and Orders all count as elite kills. And elite kills were the hardest camo challenge. They took the longest. So now that that's fixed, uh, the camo challenge is a lot more faster. And the easiest one, the hardest one now, sorry, is the 2,500 critical kills for most of those weapons and the consecutive 20 kills. You don't even need to worry about the other challenges now. Uh, it's basically just how fast you can do those two, or how fast you can get to 2,500 critical kills and how fast you can get your gun to level 50, so then you can do the last uh, challenge of 20 consecutive kills. So in the gameplay here, I'm using the 1911. And I'm going to show a strategy with the 1911 that you can use for literally every other gun except for the snipers, the magnum, and the uh, sorry, the rocket launchers, and the M79 of course, and the knife. So you can literally use this strategy with every single other weapon other than those weapons. And I'll have individual strategies for those weapons as well uh, in the towards the end of this video. So if you want to see those videos. Uh, if you want to see those weapons, go towards the end of the video. So basically, first of all, we went into the main area after round three. So we opened the door from the first room, went out of the first room, hanged around the main area until round five. Then we turned on the power and then we got everything set up by round seven and we were able to get Pack-A-Punch also by round seven. Also, if you see anything laying on the ground, like a score streak or anything like that, it's probably going to be a mim Mimic. So run up to it, a Mimic will spawn, hopefully. Sometimes it doesn't, sometimes it does. And that's already one free Elite kill out of 15. You can literally get all 15 Elite kills by about round 22. So Elite kills really are nothing to worry about now, which is really good because they used to be, like I said before, the longest uh, camera challenge to get. So at the moment, I'm hanging out in the first room. The spawns in the first rooms are really fast, and that's obviously our main goal is for zombies to spawn in and for us to get the most amount of critical kills in the fastest amount of time. So I hanged around in the spawn room until I had uh, enough money to buy Quick Revive, Stamina, Jargonog, and uh, Deadshot Daiquiri. And they're the four perks that will really set you up for this run. So basically, once you get all four of those perks, you want to come over to here, which is the weapons lab. Now, the reason why you want to come here is it's kind of like the penthouse on a uh, die machine, but just not quite as far. And uh, basically, what you want to do is sit in the back corner here. You want to have Ring of Fire on every single class, no matter what. Just every single class when you're trying to get uh, Dark Ether, you always want to have Ring of Fire on it because it's just the best. Best for headshots, best for everything. Um, so... Go to the weapons lab and just sit in that corner and just aim for the head. Uh, when it is a assault round like this, you just want to go up close to where the zombies are spawning and you just spam at their heads again. All your aim is, guys, is to get these critical kills done. All the other challenges will just come naturally except for the consecutive kills challenge. Uh, you might have to focus up just a little bit to try not to get hit with 20 kills in a row, but it's pretty easy anyway. Um, so yeah, here we are, round 29, and we're at the weapons lab, and we're just camping in the back corner. We've been camping here the whole time, sitting here, and just aiming for the head. Now, at about round 30, or on round 30, you should have about 1,200 critical kills, or 1,250 critical kills, and you should have all your elite kills done. So, at this stage, you want to leave the game. So, after I finish this round, I'm going to leave the game, and then I'm going to get into a game of Dime Machine. Now the reason I want to do this is because I've already done all the elite kills and I need 1,250 more critical kills to complete the critical kills camo challenge. And so if I were to play Firebase C to get those 1,200 critical kills, it's going to take a long time. So what I do is I leave the game and then I get into a new game of Die Machine. Now the reason I do a new game of Die Machine is because the spawns are way faster. In the uh, especially when you camp in the penthouse. So I'm going to show that in one second. So I leave the game here, and then I get straight into a game of Diamond Remember, I've done all my elite kills, so I don't really need to worry about that. All I want is critical kills. So round three, you go up to the penthouse, and you'll just follow my lead here. Uh, the penthouse is just so fast, guys. It's like an hour faster when you're trying to go for around 100 than the weapons room on Firebase C. So you come up to this room, 
And then you want to sit up here until round nine, I would say. And then you want to leave. Don't open the door behind you, by the way. If you've never done the strap, don't open the door that is behind you. What you want to do is leave at round nine and turn on power and get packed a punch. And then you want to come straight back up here. Uh, you'll see why this, just the spawns are a lot quicker, so you're going to get a lot more critical kills. And uh, it's just better than Firebase C for that reason. It's also way easier to turn on the power on this map. I mean, it's pretty easy on Firebase C, but this map, it's just awesome even quicker. Track. So uh, You see it's round 8, and now I'm going to leave. Go out through this way, and then make your way down to the facility, down that path there. And so once you have power on... You can pack a punch, and then round 28. The whole time we've been in this room, just like the weapons room, but the penthouse design, of course. Uh, they're the perks that I had, and also you want to have the uh, frost blast attachment on your weapon. It's not an attachment, sorry. The frost blast uh, support again. I can't remember what it's called, but you know what I'm saying. It's really good now. They actually made it a lot stronger, and it's really good for critical kills because it will slow down the enemies, especially at this stage, round 28. Uh, most of the guns will be doing fine now, but you'll be starting to struggle. So, if you're using, let's say, an FF AR, which is probably the one, one of the weakest ARs, you might have to leave this strategy at round 26. Or if you're in the weapons room and you're using the FF AR, you might want to leave that room also a bit earlier, and then just start the Die Machine game up. So, sometimes, if you're struggling with position, you just have to improvise a bit. But this is what... You should be able to do this with the FFAR still to about round 28, just like every other weapon except for the ones I named before as well. So once that happened, once I was struggling in that room, I left to go down to the first room. The first room is really safe. I leave the door behind me currently uh, closed so then you can just walk slowly back here and just spam the heads of the zombies and get as many critical kills as possible. And so you only want to spend... Uh, up until about round 32 and then you should have the rest of the critical kills that you need now it goes for uh, Weapon XP by the way, so you want to start This strategy at when your level is your weapon level is 40 for primaries and your weapon level is I don't know, like 20 for secondaries around there and then you want to start the strategy that I've just shown so I've got enough critical kills So I leave the game here uh, so now we're on to the rocket launcher. So I skipped the start. You just want to do the same start as I did with the 1911 for the rocket launchers. Uh, I got pack punch straight away. And then rocket launchers are very simple. I just trained in this first room. It's really quick. It's really simple. And uh, you should be able to do the rocket launcher really easy. All you need is really 750 kills. And then the 15 elite kills, like I said, are very easy. So you don't need to switch map for the rocket launcher you can just run in this um this area here and get all of the kills you need so try and pack a punch as fast as possible as well because it's 750 uh, pack punch kills as well that's why i've done it like round seven or eight or whatever i pack punched on oh these rounds are very good assault rounds are very good for the rocket launcher as well you get a lot of kills here you literally can just stand up there and then just spam <laughs> the rocket down and it's very easy it's like your very own kill streak so elite rounds very easy. Uh, order, you might need to buy a different weapon if you are surviving past round 30 when the order comes in. And you you already have enough elite kills then. So the order is kind of pointless, guys, for elite kills. It does three elite kills if you kill the order with a weapon. But uh, you're going to have enough elite kills already. Uh, so there I ran up to the chopper gunner on the ground and the mimic spawned. And then... Yeah, the RPG is just OP. One other thing I forgot to mention is that the turned uh, attachment on the weapons does so much more damage than Mimic. So you always want to have the turned weapon attachment for Firebase C because it just does more damage to the Mimic. And of course, that's just better because the Mimics can be really strong. They're probably the thing you need to watch out for most. The Manglers are really weak, to be honest. So they're just a free elite kill as well. And they spawn in nearly every round at like round 20 plus so uh very simple the rpg and you use this for the m79 as well and of course the sigma so just use the first room very simple and yeah i mean not much to really say about to do here oh also put the ring of fire in this position here it's just the best position for the team 
Uh, only, zombies can come up from behind you, but they don't spawn as regularly. As regularly. So the zombies will be running from the front and of course use it for mimic kills and manglers because you'll just one shot them with the ring of fire so it's a lot easier. Okay, so moving on to the knife. Uh, exact same thing again. Leave the first room round three, leave the main room round five and then try and get power on. Uh, once you've done the power, you don't even need to pack a punch your weapon to about uh, round 14. And so basically what I did is I came straight to the weapons lab because the spawns are the fastest here. And I could just get through the rounds faster. Now uh, the knife again is really easy like the RPG. What you want to do as well is you want to make sure you stand in the weapons lab. Uh, when the zombies are spawning in. That way they spawn closer to you. And then if you feel like cramped in the weapons lab, lab <laughs> with the knife. You can just walk out like I just did there. And there should be plenty of zombies and plenty of room uh, to just chill out. <laughs> and knife the zombies. Uh, so moving on to the next clip here. Same thing. I think a, a Mimic will spawn in here. The Mimics are really easy to kill with a knife. You just put down the Ring of Fire. That's why you have the Ring of Fire. Ether Shroud could probably work well, but for like the slightly higher rounds, you'd probably better just have the Ring of Fire. Plus, you can do the challenge where you knife zombies while shooting the Ring of Fire. Uh, the Mimics are very easy with the knife again. Just watch out about when you get pulled in. Also, with the, uh, the knife, you can't really do salt rounds with a knife because I mean it's a knife and there's just tons of zombies running at you so I'd recommend just get past the assault round as fast as possible use the cruising tool if you have to and just do what I did there just get past the round because it can be really annoying uh, if you like try to kill all the zombies just with your knife I'd rather just use my cruise missile with things like the rocket launcher of course you can use that and things with uh, the ARs, SMGs, LMGs all that kind of stuff you can use them as well but for the knife and also the sniper you're better off just using the kill streak that's given to you so then the round just goes past and then you can get into the next one because you can honestly fail like if i didn't use the cruise missile then the power probably would have gone out and then i would have had to do that again and that just would have been a pain so you're better off just getting past the round look how much damage this does to the mangler as well so the the knife, of course, is very solid. And then as the rounds get higher, I had to start training in this little area here. You can do this as well if you're struggling with the weapon lab strategy for any of the other weapons. So if you're using, let's say, I don't know, the M16 and you're in the weapons lab and you're struggling to get to round 30, you can just go out there and start training these zombies. So now we move on to the sniper. So the sniper is probably the most different out of the rest of them. So... The sniper, I found that on 5AC, it's kind of annoying sniping on it. So, of course, you just do the same setup as every other weapon. No difference. The setup's very easy, even with the sniper. But, uh, it's just uncomfortable to train on this map. So, what I would do, this is what I recommend, is maybe get, I don't know, 12 elite kills on this map. So, that's probably around, about around uh, 20. And then you want to leave the game and then you want to get into a uh, die machine game because the strategy for getting the sniper uh, plague diamond than duck ether is just a lot better on die machine and i'll show you guys that in a second so you can see here why i should have brought another kill streak here because the sniper is just so slow and it just makes these rounds go a bit longer and there's also the possibility that you're gonna have to turn on the power again and fail the assault round so you're better off with the, just like the knife, just using the kill strip that's given to you from the uh, tech machine, and you'll be chilling. So this is a strategy though you can use uh, when you're on medium level rounds and just trying to get those critical kills. So I would run around here, and as you can see, there's not much area. I mean, there's a, quite a bit of area, but by the time you can only get like two snipes in basically on those the zombies' heads. So basically, I would do a couple laps, and then once I knew all the zombies had spawned in, for the most part, I would run this way, and you can see that there's a lot of area in this helicopter area. There's a lot of area in this helicopter. There's a lot of space in this helicopter area, let's just say that. Um, and so I would walk back and just do this, and that way you're getting a lot more shots in um, than just running in a circle and trying to do it. So you just want to... You can just run wherever you want, basically. Um, 
and then just try and get as many shots off as you can while you're running backwards. I know it sounds kind of dumb, but it actually makes a, a big difference. The, you can't really camp with Tundra or the Pendleton. Not really the M8 A2 either, so... I mean, that gun's really bad. So you're better off just doing a loop like I am here. Run from uh, that side of the map to the other and just keep looking back and trying to get those critical kills uh, completed. Also use the Ring of Fire, of course, and, in, and that's just a free elite kill. So here we go into Die Machine after that. And this is where you want to finish all of your critical kills. So you might have to get to like round 38 or you might just have to play three games. So for all of these challenges, you only have to play two zombies games. Uh, but for the sniper, you might have to play three because Firebase Z is just really bad for snipers. And so as you can see there, I did the same strategy. I camped in the penthouse to about round seven and then I left and got Pack-a-Punch. And then I came up to this first room. I left that door closed again. Uh, just same strategy as I've shown on my other sniper videos and then we just run around in the first room and try and get as many shots off as we can. I don't know why Firebase Z just felt a lot more uncomfortable with the sniper and so I thought um, probably better off getting into a game with Die Machine where it's a lot easier and you can just use this strategy to run back and forth getting a lot of um, headshots. Also the zombies do spawn faster in this room than uh, the helicopter area. So, it just works out well. So, hopefully this video helped, guys. Another thing with weapon XP, like I said, if it's a primary weapon, you want to start these strategies at round 40. If it's a secondary, you want to start these strategies at round 20. The best way to get weapon XP, because I know that's hard, that's most of the issue, really, for a lot of you guys, is getting weapon XP. Um, hopefully, these strategies do make it a lot faster to actually get in the camos, though. To get weapon XP, uh, five, uh, Dirty Bomb works well, and... Uh, just multiplayer in general works really well. But if you're not good at multiplayer, you can always hop on to uh, some co-op zombies as the weapon XP rates are higher. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video.